Hello and welcome to IABM TV. Today I'm joined by Jan Weigner, CTO at Synergy. Jan, welcome to IABM TV. Thank you for having me. So, Jan, you've recently released MultiViewer version 15. Can you tell us about some of the updates? Yes, I mean, we are, of course, looking for new buzzwords. This was planned to be our big NAB release, but let's not talk about that. Um, we have strengthened our SRT features. Now we can do encryption in and out. That's also the point. We live in a challenging time, and our MultiViewer 15 release is really also focusing on the fact that people are now wanting to work at home, that they need to be able to see what's going on in and out of the facilities wherever they are. And by the fact that we have SRT, NDI, and all these other wonderful, of course, existing standards covered in MultiViewer, but now we give you the additional flexibility to basically have your MultiViewer in your pocket. And I always like to basically show off by saying here, for instance, is my smartphone. And this is um, a MultiViewer output from our data center in the cloud, so I can see what's going on, what channels are coming in, what channels are going out, what do my play hats do, what is my play out doing, are my signals coming in, are there any, any problems, and that's here in my pocket. That could be, of course, your machine at home, your laptop, um, wherever you are, to embed that maybe into some internal web page um, to, to trigger certain controls, all kinds of things, but it gives you a whole set of flexibility. And not just in master control and playout, we actually had recently the most sales went into production sites where people also have the challenge of how we do produce remotely. Can we see whether the signals are coming in? Is everything A-OK? -okay? And this is where this is ideally suited to be used just as well. So Jan, what sort of challenges are your customers facing with the new remote working situations that we find ourselves in? Well, it depends on the country you are. They can be either forced to work completely from home. You don't have any access to your facilities anymore. You may have projects that you are eager to deploy, but they don't let you even into a data center anymore. It's a whole variety of problems that uh, you're facing, whether you are actually the, so to speak, the actual user that needs to work with the stuff and put a signal out there, whether you are in a production environment and you actually are still lucky to run a production and you want to capture signals and, yeah, well, the sport's not going on or and many other productions being shut down. If you are so lucky to still have something to do, like news is still hot on uh, there, but even there are still some pockets of production going on, then you need to find new and innovative ways to actually make this happen. Um, we've seen now suddenly, of course, a spike in interest to go to the cloud, something they've been propagating for, for years. We've been offering pretty much all of our products from ingest to our multi-viewer product, which we already uh, touched upon, and also our play playout products, our cloud ready have been uh, available in the cloud for many years. And that comes now as a savior to many of our customers, which are saying, okay, I'm the idea was interesting maybe in the past, now it becomes a necessity. If I want to launch a channel, I have a broken supply chain, I can't get the service, I can't get into the data center, but the cloud is open 24 seven. So to quickly spin up a playout server, a multi-view or anything that you need for your production or playout needs in the cloud is something that you can do in minutes. And even if that's not something you want to keep uh, there for ages, but it's exactly the idea of the cloud that you can spin it up as long as you need it, have it available in minutes. And then when, God forbid, uh, we are finally facing the end of this, you hold it, you hold it back into on-premise situations um, to either reduce your cost, cloud ain't necessarily free. Yeah, and uh, so there is uh, many ways to do this and to benefit from it today. So do you think, Jan, that we'll find that a lot of people who maybe were hesitant about moving to the cloud as a result of this, this would have been the sort of push that's sent them into the cloud. Yes, I mean, whether it's just disaster recovery scenarios, whether it's basically peak um, installation requirements that you have that you can't get your hands on hardware, this can save your proverbial bacon. Uh, if, you, if there is actually business to be had, this is one way of making it and realizing it today. And well, you know, I think a lot of things are going to be different after this because people are going to look at it more clearly and say, why didn't we do this beforehand? And it's also you, you're forced yourself over this learning curve. And once you're in the know, you'll say, now it's just about fine tuning pricing. But the, the concept is such is sound. So why not stick with it? 
Okay, well, Jan, thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. You can find out more about everything we've discussed with Jan today at synergy.com.